Hey guys, have things in your life turned out like you had planned? Are you doing today what you thought you were going to do when you was a little kid? I'm here to tell you I'm not doing what I thought I would be doing and what my parents thought I would be doing. I want to introduce myself. Aloha. My name is Joan Haney. My friends call me the Prepper Mom. And I want to share with you what happened to me and how I got to be the Prepper Mom. So I am 60 years old, was born in 1960, and my father was a commercial fisherman. We lived out in the country in North Carolina, lived on the water. It was totally awesome. Daddy taught me how to fish. He taught me how to hunt. By the time I was 10 years old, I was a really, really good shot with a 22, even in a canoe. And that thing's moving. That makes it really hard. But anyway, and whatever Daddy taught me, whatever you kill or catch, you got to clean. So I learned that real, real, at a real, real young age. And with Daddy being a commercial fisherman, at six years old, I was threading needles and making net. By the time, well, when I was eight, I was making nets. I was sewing nets. They call it lining nets. And we just had a blast. Grandpa um, and Dad bought boats, and they started commercial fishing together. And it was just phenomenal. It was awesome. And um, I had such a great childhood. My mom and dad, we did all kinds of cool stuff. And because we lived on the water, all my cousins, they always came to our house on the weekend so they could go water skiing and fishing. And dad would do really cool things and bait um, the fish the night before so that when us kids want to go fishing, we could get, they draw all the fish in. And um, we water skied, we canoed, we swam three times a day. And, uh, but we worked our tails off to <laughs> commercial fishing. It was really hard doing that. And as years passed, um, I was able to do a ton of stuff as I got older. Uh, my mom's side of the family, they owned a huge farm. And um, it was like 30 minutes away. And that farm was 200 years old, you guys. They smoked um, hams in the, in the smokehouse. And during the Civil War, they had horses in there. It was phenomenal. It's awesome. And the old barn used to be the first Baptist church for that whole area. They had a uh, hundred acres and three acres was grapevines. And you guys, the base of them grapevines was this big. Holy cow. It, it was amazing. Real, I learned how to make preserves. Grandma taught me how to um, collect eggs. They butchered chickens and butchered pigs. And my cousins had farms and, and aunts and uncles. And they raised all kinds of produce and whatnot, and livestock. And my one uncle had three farm houses. That's great big buildings where you raise, they raised pigs. And, um, and it was a huge thing to have a pig picking. You guys ever heard of a pig picking? So you cook a half a pig and then it, for hours and hours and hours, and it's so done that you go and pick the meat off. That's called a pig picking. They do that for weddings. They do that for anything. It's really, really cool. Anyway, I learned all that kind of stuff. I learned how to quilt with my grandma on a double treadle um, machine with your feet. You're just doing like this. And, and that's getting the... Um, the sewing machine to work and that's how I learned to quilt so I was learning all these really cool things in the 60s and 70s and um I was a horse nut too oh my gosh you guys I started riding horses when I was two years old my grandpa used to would give me um 25 cents when I was really really young for brushing my aunt's horse they lived next door and uh, so I could go buy ice cream at school that was that was awesome I loved that and uh, so I brushed that horse. And I did a lot of stuff with her. And then when I was 14, I got my first horse. We were poor as heck. So, <laughs> so um, I wore hand-me-downs and high border pants. That's pants that too short for you. They called it high borders back then. And uh, but we had a great life. We we never went without. We had we always had food. Dad, we had fish, um, fish or crabs or shrimp. You know, uh, like four times a week. It was awesome. And then all the, the stuff, the produce that grandpa, my grandparents and aunts and uncles um, raised, it was just phenomenal. We had a real good life. I had um, two sisters and then a baby brother, and he's 11 years younger than me. And it, we just had just such a wonderful time. I was a tomboy. I loved to climb trees. I loved to play football. And I came home. I wore glasses back then. And um, there was a many time I come home with them wireframe glasses just bent all the heck because um, the boys they didn't hold back when they were tackling me, man. And but it was really cool, and they treated me just like one of the guys, and we just had an awesome time. 
and then um, I ended up in high school I was really shy and I would go around when I would walk down the halls I'd look down at my feet I was so shy and to be able when I had to get in front of a board at school and write stuff or do math problems I couldn't even tell you my name I was so nervous and stuff so <laughs> I've come a long ways baby but it takes a lot of practice and it takes publishing 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 <laughs> just do what Russell says hashtag so anyway and also Stephen and now Marley so um part of that family and learning from them and I love them to death and they're awesome and uh anyway as a horse nut so my goal was I always thought I was gonna live in North Carolina marry me a country boy and train horses and have a little horse farm and train horses well that's not what God had in the plan so um I do end up uh getting go off to horsemanship college come home get married by the time I was 23, I was married, divorced twice. First husband was abusive. And uh, so that was a real sad time for me. But then I prayed again. And God told me, go west, young lady. So that I'd always wanted to do that anyway. So I had some friends that lived in Idaho. And um, long story short, I go out there, talk to a county extension agent. She hooked me up with some women the next day that were driving six. Uh, six hours away from Idaho Falls outside of Boise and um, I got hired on the ranch they knew these women or, or these women knew this couple older couple that needed somebody to work on the ranch and help them so they could go to the races in Boise they had cutting horses and racing horses so I get this job fly home and my sister and I drive out in four days straight we drove from North Carolina all the way out and three days later, the young man from the next ranch over, he offers to take us to this hot springs. It's only a quarter mile from the ranch. And people drove all the way from Boise to that hot springs. It was an acre in size. And it, it was just awesome. It was phenomenal. And, uh, and we went swimming there. And guess who was there? Scott Haney. <gasps> and he is roommate he had never been to this hot springs you guys this is how the lord works i'm a little john from north carolina comes all the way out to idaho uh anyway it's it was just phenomenal so i was on cloud nine uh his roommate wanted to date my sister she wouldn't go unless i went along and of course i didn't like men at that point i was still wearing my wedding band from my second marriage and um but i went along and then I fell in love with him. Holy cow. And then we were we kept dating and dating and double dating and having a blast. Going all the way to Boise and uh and going dancing, doing all kinds of stuff and just having a great time. And first we get married, two years out. Then it was one year out. Then we ended up getting married the day after I got divorced. So that was thirty eight years ago. Uh, we've had four children, four grandchildren. My husband and both my sons are combat vets. We lived, we've had gardens, lived in four different states in the United States in the military, and, um, and also in Germany. We were in Germany when the wall came down. Our last daughter was born in Germany. So that was really cool. And we were raising rabbits when we were in Germany. So all this time, we were practicing. Scott liked backpacking. He used to backpack around Mount Rainier and stuff. And so we hiked and backpacked and did all kinds of outdoor stuff. We even took the kids with us and went uh, camping with them and all kinds of things like that. We gardened. We tried every experiment we could. We did aquaponics. Um, we, we've raised all kinds of plants and trees and everything you can think of. Um, pigs, chickens, horses. We had a huge horse farm. I did five day overnight summer camps with kids. We had 29 head of horses and four were drafts. And we're going back, even though we have a tractor, we're going back to animal power. So all these things, guys, I mean, making candles, making soap, um, food storage, canning food, freeze drying food, um, planting stuff. Uh, we just have a small little 20 acre farm right now. And, um, but we're doing everything organic. I got really sick about three years ago, so we're on this huge health kick, and um, or I got on this huge health kick even before then, but especially after that, and lost the weight that I gained from being sick with thyroid issue, and have got my life back together, and I want to share one more thing with you. 
I went to Funnel Hacking Live um, September this year in Orlando, Florida. And I got really, really inspired. <coughs> Excuse me. And so inspired that I thought, okay, Joan, don't be a chicken anymore. I had cracked some ribs about 18 years ago. And so ended up going to massage school. We sold our horse farm. Well, I became a Hawaiian Lomi Lomi massage instructor and healing arts instructor and a massage therapist. Anyway, that's another story. But I was told, sell your business. And I was scared to do that because I still have debt for my um, apprenticeship. But I kept being told, do that. Over about four or five years, I've been told that every once in a while. I'll pray and it's like, do your calling at church. Do your prepping. Do your emergency preparedness. Do that and the Lord will bless you. And I'm here to tell you today that I sold my business this past September and all these cool things have happened and I've um, been able to continue or start back up taking um, doing training with Steve and now Marley and I that's how the prepper mom came about and my goal is is to have survival ranches help busy moms be able to be prepared for any man-made or natural disaster and to be able to get all the food and supplies and everything they need so that they can survive anything, whether a spouse or loved one loses their job, whether there's um, something crazy going on in the economy, um, nationally, if there's another pandemic, you don't have to worry because you have all your food, all your supplies, everything you need and have a whole bunch of awesome women that you can do this with. Sexy babes, we're going to kick butt. We're going to uh, have retreat survival camps all over the United States and in Hawaii and um, and just have a blast. Have uh, prepper farms or self-reliant farms, ranches where we can do riding programs for combat vets. So that's my story. That's how I became the prepper mom. And I wish you the best. And in everything, just know there's a reason for everything. And if you will listen to God, Spirit, Source, whoever you look to, to your higher power, you will get the answer to what you need to be doing in your life. And you will receive peace and joy inside. God bless you. And keep on prepping.